Okay, back. Now, for the horizontal asymptote. The line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of y equals f of x. If and only if f of x approaches b from the positive, so that means above, or f of x approaches b to the negative, that's below, as x approaches positive infinity or as x goes to negative infinity. And let me show you what that looks like. Okay, x is, x is getting bigger, and the y, which is f of x, is approaching b from below, negative, okay, from the negative direction. So it approaches b. Now this one, okay, as x is go going to negative infinity, in this case, the y is also approaching b from the negative okay that's what that looks like so this is like quadrant four this is quadrant three in this case and as x approaches positive infinity b y is approaching b from above okay and then this one as we're going to the left, as it approaches negative infinity, this is getting closer and closer to um, B. Now, I want to mention something here because I was playing around and I, I created one of these that inside here, this can cross. It can cross and then get close. But as you go to infinity, it, it gets closer and closer, doesn't cross. But it, right in here in the, in the local area, it might it might go below and come back up. And I've seen that several times. So it's, it's we're talking about on the extremes. On the extremes, it's going to get closer and closer and not touch. There are cases where it does cross like in the it, it, around the origin and that. But then it then as you, as you go out to the extremes, it's you could see it's starting to get closer and closer to the uh, horizontal a asymptote. Show that the line y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. Well, it's the parent function, one over x. Okay. As x becomes unbounded, that means as it goes to a in positive infinity, f of x approaches zero from above. Therefore, the line y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote of the graph. And so and they're just showing you, as this gets bigger, this is getting closer to zero. And the same thing, the more negative you go, all right, it's getting, it's also getting closer to zero. So it looks like that, all right? Again, when in doubt, graph it out, all right? It's, it's good to look at these stuff and play around with them on your graphing calculator or, or in Desmos if you don't have one. Determine the horizontal asymptotes of this graph. Now this one here, if you notice, they both have the same degree. You have x squared on the top and bottom. So we're going to just divide it out. This is, this is what I like to do. I mean, it's an easy way to remember. It divide it and it's a one-step division. It's not a big deal. See, put in your placeholders. So here we don't have an x term, we don't have an x term or a constant, so put in your placeholders. It's a very easy question, and why is my 1 backwards? I don't know. Okay, but uh, that's a 1 backwards, Instant, I've reflected or something. All right, it's funny, but that's a 1. Okay, x squared, what do you multiply x squared by to get x squared? It's 1, all right? And then 1 times x squared is x squared plus 0x plus 1. Okay, we got to subtract. So we distribute the negative. It's like multiplying everything by negative. And so you end up with negative 1. So th this negative 1 is the remainder. 
you remember you can always write the remainder you can even put an r negative one but in our case we want to write it over the divisor which was x squared plus one so this is your remainder now what's cool about this and i always thought this was super cool is that we could just move this over here and we have our vertical shift you see that all i did was put the first term at the end the constant and that's a positive because there's no something negative in front of it. So that's a plus one. That means this thing is going to shift up one. So no, and you'll see what happens here. This. So we divide that, we get that. And if you if you do this out now, this is getting real real close to calculus, guys. This is um. They're saying as x approaches infinity, right? As x approaches infinity, what happens? All right. Well, this is going to get super, super big, right? If you divide something into super uh, infinite number of pieces, it basically is each piece is nothing. And that's what they're saying. It's approaching zero. All right. So as this goes to infinity, this goes to zero. Now, that's this part. That's this part right here. This goes to zero. And so, what's zero plus one? Well, it's going to be one, right? So it approaches one from the negative. Okay, we're coming from the negative. So that means it's approaching one from where? When we're talking about the y, what's negative? It's, it's below, okay? It's y equals 1, but and it's below. Negative means it's coming from below. So it looks like that. Oops, let me go back. There we go. So as you as you go to infinity, yeah, you know, right, positive or negative, it approaches this, but it, you know, it, it gets closer and closer. Okay. Okay, determine the horizontal asymptote of the graph of f of x equals x squared over x squared plus 1. So this is actually a division problem. So first thing you want to look at, for you to be able to divide this into this, they have to be the same or this has to be greater. Well, for our case, we want these to be the same. And they are. Because this makes the problem real easy. And I'll show you what I mean. When these are the same degree, the numerator and denominator are the same degree. Because you can set it up this way. See, if you're missing a term, you got to put, when you're doing long division, if you're missing a term, you got to put placeholders in. So i got two placeholders on the top, one on the bottom. And then you ask yourself, well, why don't I multiply x squared by to get x squared? Well, that'd be 1, and the 1 goes right there. Now you multiply that just like you do lo any long division, and you get x squared plus 0x plus 1. You have to subtract that. But subtracting that with a polynomial, you have to distribute the negative. So it's going to look like this. Boom, 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 and the original one goes away. All right? Now this cancels out. That really doesn't do anything. Zero minus zero is zero. But here you have a negative one. All right? We could write this, put this... This is the remainder, put it over the divisor, and we're going to take out the zero for this. All right, so this is, this is the remainder over the divisor. It's going to be negative because the top's negative, the bottom's positive. So this is what it looks like. Well, this here is your vertical shift. It's just in the front, so I'm going to put it in the back. All right, so now it's back here because it's a positive one. So we have a positive one vertical shift. So it's usually the x-axis is the horizontal we're going to go up one does that make sense so th this long division when i teach long division i always say this comes in handy when you're working with these uh, irrational functions so you do the long division now if this is smaller if this was just x you couldn't divide this all right it, it's already it's already um, proper form all right it does either have to be the same or, or this can be one above. If this is one above, this will have an X down here, and that would be what they call an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote. That's possible. But they have to be, 
either the same or, or, or one above, okay, to have an asymptote. But a horizontal asymptote, they, these have to be the same. So let me go to the, so we have this, and what they're showing you here, just this part, all right, just this part here without the remainder, as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger to infinity, and then we're squaring it, put that in, think about that, squaring infinity, all right, this is getting... And we do. This is get. It's getting real, real small, right? We're we're cutting this into an infinite number of little pieces, so they're real small, all right? So it goes to zero. See, that's what that says. So this is, as this ap approaches infinity, this this whole thing goes to zero. Does that make sense? Because you keep making smaller and smaller, and smaller pieces till there's basically nothing left, and that's what it would do, all right? And then over here, if this goes to zero, right, this is going to go to the one, but it's going to go one from, from below, okay, because it's negative. This is the superscript. It's telling you where you're coming from. So here it is right here. Oops, let me go back. Wrong way, back, back. Oh, oh, let me scroll back. Right there, that's what it looks like. All right. There's your horizontal asymptote. And it's as these go out, it's going to approach y equals 1, but it's not going to, it's not going to touch it. All right. So long division is the easy way. And, and, it, and you... You gotta, these have to be the same, and you, well, you'll know, but because the first step in division should be come out to be an integer. If it doesn't come out to be an integer, then you gotta pause. If it comes out to be just an x, or starts out with, then the first one's an x, x to the power of one, then you could, you could have an oblique asymptote, okay? Now, this is, um, these are the little notes you might want to, it's a little cheat sheet you might want to make. Uh, let's take a look at these. You've got three different conditions here. A and B are the uh, leading coefficients. And this is your degree, M and N. And this just means that this is the coefficient for that term, M, okay, of that degree. So M is greater than, then there's no horizontal asymptotes. You could say if, it's, if M is just one more, it'd be, a, uh, it'd be a slant asymptote. If M is less, so if this is smaller than this one, then it's just going to be the x-axis, which is y equals 0. It's when they're the same, you're going to get the ratio here. All right? A over B and so it's the degree so if this was 1 and this is 2 it'd be y equals 1 half if this is 4 and this is 2 it'd be y equals 2 and okay. find the horizontal asymptote of f of x equals 6x squared plus 3x minus 1 over 2x squared minus x plus 2 look at the degree both of them are the same degree. The lead, okay, the leading, they have to be in proper order, right? And then standard form. And you notice that degrees are the same. So, it's this rule. When the degrees are the same, M and N are standing for the uh, degrees, right? And what this saying is, this ratio here is going to be your horizontal asset. This is a shortcut instead of dividing it out. So 6 is going to be on the top, 2 is going to be on the bottom, and so you get horizontal S is equal 6 over 2, so it's y equals 3. Alright, so this is a little shortcut. If you notice these degrees are the same, just do the ratio of the coefficients and reduce it if you have to, y equals 3. Or you can do the long division, it'll work too. Okay. Now look at this one. 
Find the horizontal asymptote of f of x is 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 over 6x minus 7. Notice that m is greater than n. It's this case. So this is 1, so 2 is greater than 1. All right? So that means there's no horizontal asymptotes. Actually, since this is one degree different, if you actually divide this out, you would get a slant asymptote. Or if you graph it out, you'd see there's a slant asymptote. So you might want to graph this out. You want to see what a slant asymptote looks like. So there's no horizontal asymptote. There is a slant or oblique. They use the word oblique for those two. Okay. Okay. In, in this example, if you look at this, the numerator is a smaller degree than the denominator. And, and, and if you just take a regular fraction, when the numerator is smaller than the denominator, it's, it's not improper, it's proper form, right? And so in this case, there's a rule here. So we have one and two. So M is less than N. So Y equals zero, zero is a horizontal asymptote. That's what the rule says. See, that's, that's one, that's two, and so it's a conditional statement, so that's true, so that's, this is also true. Y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote or the x-axis. And I believe that is the end. Okay, have a nice day.